Hello and welcome back to Let's Plant. It's been a while since we last saw each other. In fact, I think it's been two weeks, three weeks. And for those of you who didn't know, the entire family was on a vacation abroad. We flew overseas to meet my family in the Philippines. Yes, I'm a Filipino. Not only was it a grand reunion, my youngest sister got married last December. Little Nikki was a flower girl and Zach was one of the bearers. Kathy and I were one of the secondary sponsors. But let's talk about the title of this video first. I promise you it's not clickbait. My garden looks like a jungle. It's overgrown. And the reason behind that was that we were away for three weeks and there was no one looking after the garden. I was actually expecting it to be a lot drier than this and this certainly took me by surprise. I was thinking that since it was already summer and the temperatures have been soaring above 40 degrees on some days and on most days high 30s, it appears that it wasn't dry enough. The plants were still getting enough rain and since almost everything is growing right now except for the winter growers, well nature just had its way. Here's a quick peek into what the garden looks right now and if you stick around I'll show you how this came to be. <laughs> Welcome to Series Capades. My name is Chuck. I normally do this with my son, but he's in the house right now having a relaxing time. We barely had enough sleep during our flight. We just arrived in Melbourne earlier today, a few hours ago, and that was after a layover. So we had a connecting flight via Singapore which got delayed and actually our luggage hasn't arrived yet just our carry-on we're expecting the luggage to arrive sometime tonight and they're going to deliver it to our home anyway the garden like I said it's starting to look like a jungle the grass is overgrown lots of weeds everywhere it looks really messy but I'm quite thankful for them because they provide a bit of shade onto my succulent plants and in a way they soften the microclimate a bit make it more bearable for some of the more sensitive plants. During our vacation, I was checking on the weather every few days just to see if it was ever going above 30 degrees and of course, I think for half of the time it was over 35 degrees. There were even some points where the temperatures crept really close to 40 degrees Celsius. So it's really pushing the plants to the limit. I was actually fearing the worst, especially for my seedlings right here. Because of course, the seedlings would need a lot more humidity, a lot more moisture compared to my more mature plants. But thankfully, they seem to be doing well and there are even some weeds growing in here. So some of the sprouts that we saw a few weeks ago were actually weeds. But if you look closely, this little growth right here, these are all echeverias. Same goes with this other one. Echeverias. From memory, all of these are Echeveria elegans. This row, no, this column, and as for these ones, they are uh, they are various. Uh, they are an assorted type. I'll have to go back to my notes to see which one is which, but I'll give you a better overview of the seedlings, uh, how they are doing right now in a separate video. Anyway, three weeks. We were away for three weeks. What were we doing for three weeks? Well, the main reason for that break was that my youngest sister was getting married and it's been about two years since we last went home to the Philippines so we figured why not I'm a bit bothered by this weed so I'm just going to pull it out this was probably a bad idea because it might disturb some of the other seedlings but I got it already And apart from that, we also visited some relatives from both sides of the family. So my side and my wife's side, there was a lot of traveling involved. During all those time, well, three weeks, it's not long but not quite short either. Part of me was getting pretty worried about my plants because I was pretty sure that they would be doing fine under the shade cloth. I was mainly concerned about the seedlings, but it looks like they were doing okay. We had a friend come over probably twice just to help us out with watering some of the plants so I guess maybe she watered this once as well because it looks like the soil is still damp and they're doing quite good actually so yeah I really have to thank her three weeks that's a lot of time you know I kept checking the weather just to see if it was sunny or rainy or you know cloudy because I was hoping that my plants was getting enough moisture enough rain just to keep them just to keep them from drying out completely 
and it looks like they're quite happy particularly the ones that are exposed well some of them are under shade cloth but at least they're still exposed to the elements so when it rains the rain would still hit them some of the plants that are under the eaves under this uh, alfresco they are a bit dehydrated so i might have to water them now but the biggest job for me is the lawn i wasn't expecting it to be this lush because it is summer and every summer it has always been brown or almost dry so i guess either it has been raining a lot or our friend has been watering the lawn a lot it's normally the way we do it me and my mom-in-law we would just water our plants not so much the lawn except maybe when it's really dry i guess it's my first time seeing the lawn this overgrown again first time in ages i think the last time it was like this was when we moved in which makes sense because it was neglected at the time so you would hear me keep saying the words tender and loving neglect well in this case this is just plain neglect three weeks three weeks of neglect apart from the lawn and all of the weeds it looks like a lot of my gibifloras or the freely type of echeverias are pushing up flower stalks which means that they have exited the summer dormancy early and the main reason for that again the shade cloth it's their way of telling me that they are not being heated they are not being burnt you know there's not enough temperature not enough heat for them to go into dormancy mode and you could clearly see it because they are all green and they are all spread out rather than closed which is always good because i like my plants growing really fast and this might be qualifying as one of my secrets or secret methods secret techniques because a lot of you keep asking me why my plants tend to go really large so this is one of the reasons i minimize the summer dormancy by adding shade cloth and by having shade cloth that ensures that they are not too stressed during summer and they continue growing so since they already started growing in spring and that means that i have an entire block of spring a little bit of summer maybe the latter half and that moves on into autumn and they would only get through dormancy during the cold bits of winter in a way what i've done is to extend my growing period and minimizing the break in between However, on the flip side, especially for those of you in the Northern Hemisphere, you're experiencing winter right now, I would definitely advise you not to interrupt the winter dormancy cycle, especially for the winter dormant plants like the Echeverias, because they would need that winter dormancy, the rest period for them to revitalize, to re-energize, to reset. They would be growing a lot more vigorously in spring after a good winter rest. So if you have your plants in grow lights, just give them enough light to simulate the length of day the length of day that you would usually have but not the temperature make sure to keep the temperature slow low enough for them to trigger dormancy but at the same time not too low that they do not freeze because that's pretty much the reason why you have them in grow lights anyway you're putting them indoors to avoid freezing but you would still want them to be dormant like i said my gibifloras are flowering right now this tends to be the case every year. I've noticed that they tend to flower later compared to the other species, which sort of makes sense because I could I notice that they because I notice that they start actively growing late into spring and late into summer. Like they say, everyone has their time, everyone has their pace. And now that I'm here, it's time to clean up this jungle, remove the weeds so that the smaller plants would be getting enough sun. I have to make sure to trim back some of the ground cover because they are smothering some of my other echeverias and of course do something about the lawn that's going to be a huge job and it's quite late i think it's already 7 pm 8 pm yeah it's 8 pm but we're in melbourne it's summer the length of day is really long it's still bright outside consider this a january tour in the garden because i haven't shown you around because i think i just have to show you what happened to my garden here it's quite funny a lot different from what i was expecting when we came back here to melbourne so yeah so this video is mainly to show you the disparity between what i was expecting it to look like versus what it actually looks like it's a jungle and i was expecting a desert so yeah that's a nice surprise so i'll be leaving the cleanup for the next episode and i'll see you then bye
Special thanks to my Patreon supporters at Oscarino, Julie Seal, Snap Kui, Lorena Noti, Kevin Arbaez, Linda Leal, Gwen Hot, Jesse May, Q2, and everyone else who pledged on Patreon. Thank you so much. And finally, you can check out my Instagram. That's at SiriscaPage. And I post a photo of Echeveria every single day under the hashtag DailyEcheveria.